Hi friends, welcome back to Foundational Truths. My name is Nayanda. Thanks so much for joining me today. So I have something that the Lord would have me share with you. Yesterday, he just dropped it in my spirit and it trickled into this morning. And the word that he had is expectation. Expectation. And as soon as he said those words, I literally felt like I was drenched in the word, like the word just washed over me and I felt different. I felt that expectation, that anticipation of what's about to happen build up. So friend, the Lord is saying to let your expectation arise. Let it stand up. Let it be bold. You can be bold in expecting from the Lord. And an expectation is a strong belief that something will happen. Something is about to happen because of who we have the expectation from. And so friends, I pray that your heart will be open and receptive to the things the Lord is about to do. That's what he wants. He wants you to be open to receiving what he's about to deposit in your life. And so may your heart be uh, filled with, with thanksgiving and anticipation as you look forward to the move of God in your life. And may expectation arise within you like a woman who is nine months pregnant and also her water has been broken and she's in labor. May you have that sort of expectation because once the water breaks, the baby is going to come. The baby has to come because then it becomes dangerous for the mother and the baby. Praise God. And so I feel that we're in that moment that the water has broken and that the, the labor we're pushing and travailing and the Lord is saying that the, we can we can expect something to happen because just like that mom feels that baby in her stomach many of you can feel the 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 rewards and the gifts and the fulfillment of what the Lord has promised just rising in you it feels so close and so let your expectation arise because that mama is going to hold the baby very soon and so will you. And so friend, the Lord is going to do this. Now, the thing about expectation is that it could come with disappointment. When you focus on something particular to happen and it doesn't work out, your disappointment is great. But if this is your time, you do not have to worry about disappointment. If this is your time, you are going to know it. And one way to know that it's your time is that when you spend your private time with the Lord, he will give you certain words. He will give you phrases. He'll give you words. He'll say certain things to you. And he he's what he's doing is he, he's directing you on a particular path. So if he's been speaking things to you like reward and recompense and things like it's here, et cetera, et cetera, that is a sure way to know that something is coming to you. So you can build that expectation up for something to happen, for your promise to be fulfilled. Now, Isaiah 66 verse nine reassures us that we can expect for the Lord, from the Lord. So this is what the Lord does. He asks a question and then he answers his own question through Isaiah the prophet. This is what he said. Would I ever bring this nation to the point of birth and then not deliver it? Asked the Lord. No, I would never keep this nation from being born, says the Lord. So there is your answer. The Lord is going to deliver on his promises. And as I was praying last night, I heard the Holy Spirit whisper to me, people are going to say, look at what the Lord has done. Look at what the Lord has done. They are going to marvel at the way the Lord orchestrates this entire thing. They will marvel at the way the Lord orchestrates this entire thing. So let your expectation rise because the Lord would not 
bring you to the point of birth and then not have you deliver this baby. Hallelujah. Another thing that he mentioned was you are coming into a great harvest. And this is this is not only for promises that God has made to you personally, but this is also for those of you who've answered the call of, of God on your lives. So what God has given you and you planted it, meaning you invested it as much as you know how to, regardless of what it looks like, growth has been taking place. And as long as you keep at it, keeping in step with the Lord, growth will, was always taking place behind the scenes. So if you have answered the call on your life, even if you were getting frustrated and you didn't know what you were doing and you feel like you're not seeing the results that you were looking for, the Lord is saying that I've always been growing it, but of course growth is different based on the stage and based on who you are and what your calling is. But I want you to listen to this quick parable and don't skip over this because it's, it's a mini parable. It's literally four sentences, you guys. So this is what Jesus said. The kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Night and day while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows. So whether he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and, sprouts and grows, but he does not understand how it happens. So your seed has been planted and it has been growing. The earth produces the crops on its own. First, a leaf blade pushes through, then the heads of wheat are formed, and finally the grape ripens. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle, which is a tool um, for harvesting, for the harvest time has come. So friend, your time of harvest has come. And it may not look like what you think it should look like, but nevertheless, your seed that you have planted is growing. And as long as you keep at it, keep doing what God has called you to do, then he is indeed increasing you. And so keep at it and don't give up because increase looks different from, for different people. So I want to also give you this analogy. You know, two women can be nine months pregnant. But just because one mother's water breaks, it doesn't mean that the other mother's water is gonna break at the same time. So if someone gets a breakthrough today and yours gonna come today, it does not mean that it's not going to happen and it doesn't mean it's your time. Because if you know within yourself, not hoping, but truly know within yourself that it's your time, it's going to happen. Because of the fact of the matter is one woman's water could break today and the next, the next woman's water could break two weeks from now. We don't know the exact moment, but if you know this is your time, then you are going to see that breakthrough you are looking for. I remember uh, being in church one Saturday, it was like a special service, and uh, the preacher was just like, he was just on fire and he was preaching hard. And he was like, breakthrough is here for, for so many people. Breakthrough is here. And if you feel a breakthrough is coming your way, then come to the altar. And I wanted to go to the altar. I was going through something um, very difficult. I wanted to go to the altar, but I knew within myself, I knew within myself that it was actually not my time for a breakthrough. And this is before I was even confident in hearing God's voice, but I knew within my spirit, this was not my time for my breakthrough. I knew I had to go through this and I knew I had to continue on the path. And so I actually didn't go up and I sat in my seat and I prayed, I prayed and I prayed and I asked God to give me strength to endure. So my point is that you will know if this is your time. Even if you're frustrated and you want to get out, you will know when you have been purified by fire. So when it's your time, it's your time. All right. So the Lord continued this morning and he said that you will receive a double portion for the troubles you have been through. And there's some things that happened to some of you that were absolutely devastating and they were not part of the purification process. They were an outright attack from the enemy. And the Lord says, I see those things. And for that, you are going to receive a double blessing for that which you had to endure. 
And the Lord also said, the old is gone and the new has come. And this morning, I sensed that heaven was cheering us on. I heard um, applause in my spirit, and I, sta I sensed standing ovations, and I even heard whistling in my spirit. And so friends, this is what Holy Spirit brought to me in that moment. He said, you are upon the moment that you will settle in the land. Friend, you will settle in the land. When Joshua first entered the promised land, he had to take out some giants. Hallelujah. He had to take out some giants, which are the enemies in those lands. And God has been dealing very strongly with the enemies of his people. He's been dealing with your enemies very strongly. And they, in fact, have been humbled. Your enemies have been humbled. And you are about to see a manifestation of this humbling take place. And so now this is the time to settle in the land. And friend, every situation, including legal matters that are unresolved, will be settled. It will be settled and God is going to do this. And it is time for your circumstances to become congruent with what God has said. We declare that situations that surround us will become congruent with God's word. Listen, friends, God is bringing order to the chaos like he did at the very beginning. The Lord is bringing order to your life and he's giving you this new beginning. The giants have been taken out and you are ready to settle down in your land of promise. And this place is a place where you will experience wholeness. You're going to experience joy and peace. This is a place where you will experience God's blessings in your life and you will be positioned to help bless others. This is the place of fulfillment. The Lord doesn't only want to establish you. He wants to settle you. The Lord wants to settle you down. So many of you have felt like you're in, stuck in two different wor worlds, but the Lord now is settling you. He's settling your mind. He's settling your situation. He's settling circumstances. He's settling family. He's settling everything for you. This is a place that you are going to be whole and positioned to really build and expand the kingdom of God. So friends, your inheritance is here. This is your reward. In fact, part of expectation is anticipating um, something you were promised. And our father is giving us some of our inheritance. In Joshua 13 verse 8, and I'm finishing, Joshua divides the inherited land to the children of Israel. And I feel like we are entering into this moment, the division of the land. And I remember that on December 20th, when the Lord told me that the rewards are here, he also said something very important. He said to guard it. Guard your reward. Guard your reward. So he wants you to watch over your reward and to protect it. Not to baby it, but you need to protect it. You need to understand that every good and perfect gift comes from God. So this gift that is from the Lord, it is to honor him. It is to give him back glory. And, you know, this is something like I that like the Holy Spirit said that it's going to be talked about. And so it is given to you to honor the Lord and to fully enjoy your gift. You must continue in the way of holiness and obedience. Obedience to the Lord is continuous and it is just the most perfect place to be in the presence of the Lord. Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. You lack nothing in God's presence. There is fullness of joy and at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So friends, let your expectation rise now. Hallelujah. Remember to always worship the gift giver and not the gift itself. I want to end with saying, let your expectation arise. And remember, this is what the Holy Spirit said. People are going to say, look at what the Lord has done. And I am so excited. 
for these next couple of days. I am so excited for the things the Lord is about to unfold in our lives. So friends, thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon. The Lord um, gave me a word for 2024 that I'd like to share with you. And I'm going to do that with you probably tomorrow or on January 1st. And I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.